Hello, everybody. Scott Golden here, Golden Opportunities Coaching. Welcome, welcome to those of you who are new. Welcome back to those of you who are seasoned veterans of what we do here on this YouTube channel. Please subscribe, like, and uh, share this video. Actually, it's an audio series, so I might as well call it audio, but you're looking at a screen. Some of you are, anyway. Today, we're going to talk about toxic people and how to know if you're dealing with one. Um, these are just some basic signs. I think I'm going to go into about uh, between seven or ten categories. Not sure we'll get to everything in this audio, but we'll get to as much as we can. Um, and so toxicity can be uh, defined as a overwhelming negative experience that's persistent over several interactions. So toxicity is not we had a bad experience. Toxicity is not even we've had a couple of bad experiences. Toxicity is we've had a series of bad experiences and can expect to have negative experiences with a person in dealing with them again in the future. Um, So we'll start with one that's really, really quite common, and that is an inflated ego. A toxic person is always going to bring the conversation, uh, the flow of energy, the the ideas and concepts in a conversation, the ideas and concepts in what they do when they're with you, back to the one thing, and that is, of course, themselves. So these individuals are more likely than not going to be focused only on how things, emotions, activities, actions, the past, the future, um, even world events, how they affect them. They are only focused on themselves and how their small bubble in the world is is affected by whatever is going on. These individuals often have difficulty understanding and and or expressing any interest in what's going on with you unless it directly affects them. Um, And so that leads us into number two, which is kind of an overlap into that selfishness. They're only focused on themselves. They can't see the global needs that may exist during this pandemic. They may um, have difficulty understanding why you would care more about your parents or your children or your significant other than them. They may be harsh with how they approach you. If you say you've got other priorities outside of them, there's always a second guessing of anything you say or do that doesn't trail back to them. And Quite often, they'll leave you feeling tired. If you're dealing with a toxic person, um, especially right after dealing with them in the, let's say, 15 to 20 minutes or so after having an initial dealing with such a person, you will, in fact, have uh, a lot of difficulty in going, that was really heavy. That, I'm tired now. I'm, I'm worn out. I feel like I want to go take a nap. I feel like I want to go cry or expel negative emotion myself. And that's because they're so focused on themselves that you almost feel like you've been having a conversation with an inanimate object or a brick wall or someone who has no capacity or or desire for empathy. So we'll move on to the the third in our list, and that is harsh language uh, and and constant insults. A toxic person uh, is constantly in, in emotional pain and emotional upset. And so they're going to look at the world through a negative purview. And in looking at the world through a negative purview, their language is very coarse. Uh, They may insult your intelligence. They may insult your appearance. They may insult your intentions or how you view the world. They're going to consider you to be naive. They're going to consider you to be ill-prepared to deal with, quote, reality or their version thereof. They may question your sanity. They may question your ability to cope with the world around you. They may question whether you're too naive to succeed in life and a whole bunch of other things. But the main key here is um, that these individuals have no problem telling you about yourself in a negative way, almost in an apathetic or very dismissive monotone voice usually, and they will do so almost to the point of bullying you and getting up in your face, making you want to cry, making you perhaps... Uh, so frustrated that it's difficult to even get a word in edgewise. Um, These individuals, as as we move forward, also have zero boundaries. So you can be saying, hey, that's over the line. Hey, that's that's going too far. Hey, that's uncomfortable. Hey, that's that's unnecessary. You don't need to be saying that. You don't need to be doing that. And they're going to continue to go at you. They're kind of like a 
a wolf who smells blood or a shark who smells blood. They're going to go at you and go at you and go at you. And their goal in doing that is to get you to submit to their way of thinking to make themselves feel powerful. They don't care what you think. Actually, they think that your ability to think at all is somehow damaged and that you should think only like they do. And if you don't think like they do, well, so be it. You're a fool, and they have to tell you so in order for you to be okay. Um, it's also important to realize that these individuals are, in fact, struggling to find a sense of self-identity. So much of their identity is tied into telling you about yourself, telling others about themselves, and having what is our next, uh, the next reality, which is unrealistic expectations. They will hold you to standards that they themselves couldn't meet, but they'll hold you to them anyway. This may manifest in you have to always be there for me, even if it's 3 in the morning. You have to always have something ready for me, whether it's attention, money, power, uh, sexuality, um, uh, you know, a listening ear, whatever it is. Always you must be willing to drop everything you're doing for me. Uh, and I'm not going to reciprocate. You have to be okay with that. So again, it goes back to, the, the lack of boundaries and selfishness and the expectations being very one-sided, almost dismissive of the emotional context at which it's going to affect you at all. Um, the next one specifically pertains to children, and that is exposure to adult situations very early. Uh, a toxic person, especially a toxic parent or a toxic family member, will expect children to be almost uh, inhumanely wired. That is to say, and children are going to make mistakes, right? Children are going to have moments where it's like, hey, I've done something dumb, I've done something stupid, it, it happens because I'm young, I'm inexperienced, I'm naive, I don't know everything I need to know about social interaction, about social dynamics and social cueing, and I'm going to make mistakes. And the toxic individual will, in fact, humiliate a child or adolescent for making any sort of social faux pas. There's a certain level of... Um, power exchange that comes with that. And that ties into our final thought here, which is complete social submission. So the, the complete social submission paradigm is this. Um, the toxic individual is so insecure that they can't admit to themselves that they could ever be wrong about anything. And so instead, they'll use language, body language, um, behavioral cueing, and other such things as a manner to kind of control how another person responds to the actual behavior around them. And then what they will do is they will immediate, immediately try to pressure a person into behaving in a manner which may not be in their best interest, uh, might make them question their own autonomy, their own self-ability, uh, and make the other person feel like, if I don't agree, there's negative consequences. First of all, if you're dealing with a toxic person in your life, get assistance. Getting away from them is only part of the battle. The reprogramming of your mind, as well as the self-forgiveness necessary to go forward and formulate healthy relationships, is a team effort. You're not going to be able to do it completely by yourself in most cases. Now, there are some very lucky people who have the mental capacity and emotional uh, um, ability to, to power through these things on their own, but that's one or two out of every hundred people. For most individuals, dealing with a toxic relationship formulates bad habits, bad thought habits, um, negative impacts of, of emotional core values, um, often addictive behaviors to cope with the pain of this, self-harming behaviors in some cases, especially uh, teenage females are, are, are prone to this. Um, Men, it shows as hyper-masculinity or hyper-anger, super angry individuals, or, or extreme apathy, not caring about anything. Um, in, in 20 and 30-somethings, it may show as addictive personality traits and types, where, where there's a desire to do anything to get away from the emotions of remembrance of a toxic individual. Now, um, the, if you're dealing with toxic relationships, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Actually, what's wrong in a situation is what happens to you, not you yourself. Now, yes, your mental uh, relationship to what really happened to you is negative. It doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Instead, 
I I teach clients what's known as the positive and progressive or destructive mentality. Is something positive and progressive or is it destructive? And we can define positive and progressive as something that moves us forward in life in a way that, that is not going to do any harm. We can define destructive as something that moves us backward in life and automatically does harm to ourselves or someone else or, or a combination of both. And so if you're dealing with this and you'd like assistance, and maybe in a lot of cases, um, the traditional mental health field, although it can be helpful, I, I don't want to discount our traditional methodologies of therapy, especially if they haven't been tried before. But in some cases, in a lot of cases, the blame game that goes on with traditional mental health, which says, well, you did this, and therefore you're thinking wrongly this way, can be negative and actually reinforce those toxic belief systems. Um, in, in the methodology that I work with clients on, we look at, okay, this is painful, this is uncomfortable, it's not right, it's not wrong, it just is. How do we change and rewire your brain for a more positive outlook and impact going forward? Because there's, here's the reality. The future doesn't exist because we co-create it with every action we take. The past is irrelevant outside of just laying it as groundwork because we can't go back and change it. All we can do is stay present moment-minded in the now. And in the now is where change begins. So if you're struggling with this issue, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we, are, we are running the social reconnection uh, discount, which uh, you can ask about either in PM on Twitter, at PO Perception, or in PM here on YouTube. And any new client gets that discount, please ask about it. We'll make it clear. Also, for folks who are new to Golden Opportunities Coaching, if you can provide um, new subscribers to the channel because we're trying to reach subscriber goals so that we can monetize the channel and thereby give money away to people affected by the COVID virus. Um, if you can get people to subscribe and, and they stay subscribed, in other words, don't buy uh, subscriptions from a third world country, but legitimate individuals, friends, family member, what have you, discounts are available for people that do that as well. Um, this is going to be running for the foreseeable future, so we, this uh, video is evergreen, so don't don't think that you don't qualify for a discount if we're a few months or whatever down the line and you're listening to this for the first time. In any event, this has been Scott Golden with Golden Opportunities Coaching, reminding you to keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.